Since it first debuted on May 31st, 2000, CBS's Survivor has become a reality TV juggernaut, pumping out 40 American seasons starring hundreds of hungry castaways and entertaining tens of millions of viewers. While the game has changed dramatically since those brave, ambitious men and women washed up on the beaches of Borneo more than 20 years ago, one thing remains the same. The show lives and dies based on how well each season is cast. So now, on the eve of the show's impending return, after a long year-plus filming hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the great pop culture debate wants to look back at the existing Survivor seasons and discuss, what is the best Survivor cast ever? I gave up my individual immunity to Natalie, and all I got in return was this lousy podcast. I'm your host, Eric Resniak. Please help me welcome my panelists. Come on in, guys. He drops his buff as often as he drops trow. It's Bob Erlenbach. Only for Malcolm. Malcolm, call me. (laughs) He's been sitting in his spy shack and he knows all your secrets. It's Corey Conway. You want to know who you're talking to? (laughs) What's going on? I do want to know who I'm talking to. And Jonathan, Wanda, Francesca. Here's our first boot. It's Michael Schwartz. It's Francesca. And you don't like me. You really don't like me. (laughs) So how does this work? Since this is a mini-sode, there was no public poll. Our panelists went through the cast of all 40 American seasons of Survivor that had been released as of August 2021 and submitted a list of their favorites. From there, we compared notes and came up with our final 16. Now we argue about it and insult each other, all for your amusement. So before we actually start, I want to go over a few of the casts that were nominated by our panelists but didn't quite make the bracket. So to my panelists what is one cast that you hope to debate but didn't make the cut bob i'm going to start with you um the one that i would pick would be blood versus water one the first one uh one of the things i'll talk about you'll hear me probably say throughout today's episode is i favor the casts that have returned castaways and this is one that did um i really liked that um it had some others some previous survivors returning with their loved ones um it was something with with regards to just being familiar with some of them knowing some of the exciting things that they did on their on their seasons and then also knowing that we could meet some new cast members um that were important to them and it also created some really interesting dynamics of family members having to decide to vote for each other maybe joining different alliances it, it from a dynamic perspective it really created some some interesting situations that we saw so that's really the cast one of the casts that i really liked i know it didn't make the cut it's not like my favorite cast but it's it's uh one of the like the themes that i really enjoyed um of the survivor season so that's that's really where i was with that one bob did you know that sierra voted off her mom I know, and that's why I love her. <laughs> I know, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, folks. That's one of those long-running uh, Survivor jokes. Corey, what about you? What's your uh, one that you nominated but didn't quite make it? Okay, this is an easy one for me. I got to go with the Australian Outback, old school, season two, coming right off the heels of the first season of the show. Uh, people didn't know whether Survivor was going to be able to match or top what it had done the first time. And you get this cast. Um where you have moments like with Alicia with her finger waving in Kimmy's face, mm. uh, Chef Keith going against Jerry for cooking, who, who cooks for the tribe, all these, uh, Colby and Jerry. This cast was a 16-person cast, like all the old school seasons were. And of those 16 people, eight of them have come back to play again. Of those eight people, five of them have come back to play for a third time. Mm. So this is a very... Influent. This is a, a hugely important cast for the history of the show as a whole. At, you know, for when, for at the time that this cast was playing the game and when their episodes were airing, and for the history going forward. So, yeah, I, I think it may also be the most watched season. It was. Yeah, because I think it debuted after the Super Bowl, and I believe uh, it like the first season certainly grew and grew and grew very rapidly in popularity. It started out strong, but was massive by the end. And then I think two started out just a juggernaut, and I think after that the rating started to slip. But agreed, yeah, and, I, and I, to touch on what Bob said about kind of favoring seasons with returning players, I sort of fa- I'm the opposite. I sort of favor seasons that have original casts. So when you look at this original cast. And how many players have come back to play again and what their contributions for this show have been. This is an easy choice for me. Nice. Michael, what about you? 
So one of the ones that didn't make it is actually one of my favorite seasons. And it's not just that it's the cast too. And that's Vanuatu. So season nine coming right off the heels of all stars in season eight for us. And this is the first time that they try the, we're going to make a tribe of all men and a tribe of all women for it and try this um, thing. And I think that what a lot of this, what it is, is the, the dynamics between having single gendered tribes, like all the men beating their chests and everything and like being, and the women really starting to, they, they really start to like snipe at each other when they, um, they go. And this is how Chris gets all the way to the end. Yes. Despite how, you know, nobody was sure he was going to make it through episode one because right. he couldn't cross the freaking balance beam. Yeah. Um, but mm. he manages to pull so many things together, makes the merge, gets the women to turn on each other, and t- and in the end takes Twyla to the end. And just like, it, it, it's almost as toxic a final tribal as the first one. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of how much everybody hates both of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, how you know you played Survivor uh, right, is when everybody exactly. hates you. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you said the word, when you said the name Twilight, I got shivers down my exactly. body. <laughs> exactly. Everybody, it's like she swears on her son's life that she would never betray um, Amy and Eliza. And, and in, the, in the end, she backstabs them both. It's, it's so just, good. It oh, is, it's mean, great. And yet she still you mean plays Eliza the victim. for Manhattan. You mean Eliza for Manhattan District Attorney? That's correct. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen either. <laughs> but she tried. She, she did for it. I will say Vanuatu to me actually is almost a Greek tragedy in terms of <laughs> the way the women all basically tear apart each other and, yes. and that like last third. It's amazing. Um, it is it is high drama and the like. Here's Mike. Just or, excuse me, Chris. Just slowly surviving to the very end it's amazing my argument is the season and the arc is incredible i don't think the cast themselves is super strong and that's one of the things we will come back to a lot in this episode folks when you're listening to this think to yourself this isn't about what's the best season that's a different debate and if i was making my list of best seasons i would not have mine on that list i'm looking at casts so the individual players creating a whole that's what i'm looking at but i I, I understand that eric but you know as our t-shirts say you're entitled to your wrong opinion speaking of wrong opinions i'm going to talk about my pick which everybody else hates but i argue that nicaragua is actually a tremendously good cast it is a lousy season it's a terrible season however it did give us the camp burning down which i find endlessly entertaining that whole <laughs> se- sequence when they're at the challenge and they're completely oblivious and they keep showing like an inferno happening back at camp amazing television but here's the the thing and and this kind of proves my point you can have an amazing cast for survivor and a garbage season but you can't usually have a garbage cast and a great season that almost never happens and i'm looking at you ghost island um but look at the the cast you have for for for, uh nicaragua brenda was incredible in the first half of that game, Brenda was a force to be reckoned with. She was like J-Lo in Hustlers. She controlled <laughs> that game with an iron grip. Marty was amazing. Like he started out so strong. He just overplayed his hand. And I loved watching that all collapse around him. Shannon, who got like booted in the first like four episodes, was a terrible human being, like an actual hateful human being. <laughs> but that's what like he's memorable, right? That's what and one of the things you'll find that I looked at was are the early boots memorable because that to me has to be part of a great cast um swamp witch jane like come on (laughs) ladies and gentlemen she's out there catching catfish cooking and eating them herself because she does not want to bring them back to camp that is (laughs) amazing <laughs> the level of spite speaking of spite holly stole that man's shoes and buried them in the lake and then she took them back and apologized and she made it almost to the end that's incredible and then nayanka oh nayanka <laughs> nayanka threatened to throw a woman's leg in the fire that's amazing <laughs> that's amazing then you have Kelly who pissed off producers so bad they invented the purple edit for her because everybody <laughs> on that on that season was like no Kelly was actually in it like she was seriously playing but if you watch it as a viewer you're like who is this girl who's in the background I don't know who she is they did that <laughs> deliberately um so yeah I think the the actual final 3 for that season is garbage 
Sorry. Oh, God, yes. Come on, Fabio. Terrible. <laughs> but, like, everybody leading up to that is amazing, including that one old man who couldn't do anything, but they just dragged his ass to, like, <laughs> final fix. <laughs> that's incredible television. So that's my spiel on Nic- Nicaragua. It's a terrible season, but there was so much potential there. It just all went wrong. And I, I think when, when it went wrong was when they got rid of Brenda. That was when the whole season flipped. Um, it's but, funny. But- until you mentioned until you mentioned the throwing the leg piece, like, yeah. I, I was having a hard hard time even picturing in my brain who this cast was oh but really anyway yeah i was like what is which cast is this that concept was young people versus old people also had jerry rice on there like no no uh coach no. Uh, jerry jimmy johnson. johnson jimmy oh, johnson jimmy thank johnson thank you I, I don't know the footballs so. sports? <laughs> sports ball sports. <laughs> That's why um, we have Corey. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yes. yes Corey uh, is our, our token straight male on this episode. Th- so thank you, Corey, for making the sacrifice. It's not a sacrifice. This is great. I love it. Good. Perfect. So um, by the way, those are the ones that didn't make the bracket. If you're looking for the bracket, please head to greatpopculturedebate.com where you can find the bracket for this and every episode of our podcast so you can play along at home and see if your matches pick up with ours. And with that out of the way, we're going to head to the tribal council and start these debates First up, we were evenly split between two casts with quite a bit of player overlap. Season 15, Survivor China, and season season 16, Survivor Micronesia, a.k.a. Fans vs. Favorites. Michael, use both hidden immunity idols in your possession to fight for China. Bob, convince me to give up individual immunity and switch my vote to Fans vs. Favorites. And I'm going to have Michael go first. So, okay. And I think I said this when I filled out my book. There's a lot of these that are very super close for me. And this mm-hmm. is one of them because China, China is just an iconic season. And it's not just for James going home with two. And not, we're not talking about small idols in no. here. These are plaques. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. There, is, there is no easy way to hide these things except in his bag. And like he's got two of them. And like literally, this is one of the ultimate blind sides. But it's got the, like, okay. Yes. The first boot, Steve Chicken Morris. Mm. Oh. Okay. Damn like, it. <laughs> exactly. Just from the name alone, you guys, everybody remembers him. And, you know, there, there's Aaron and there's Jamie early boots in like in the first half as well. But once you get down to the second half of it, like the winner through number nine. Yeah. John Robert, for God's oh, sake. Great. Frosty. Oh. Frosty. James, James yes. is in here. PG. Amanda, Courtney, and of course, one of my all-time favorite winners, even though he turned into such a dumpster fire of a life after this happened, was Todd. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that he has gotten back on the horse and he has recovered Good. and everything is going I'm better so for him. I'm so glad to hear that for him. I really am. I know. But like, yeah. I know that everything went to hell in a handbasket for him after this show is over. But literally, Todd was seriously, he he had such control of this game that he deserved this win more than anything else in the world. But, but like, just looking at it. Now, and I know Bob's going to talk about fan versus favorites in mind. There's a lot of great things that go on over there, too. But for me, and this, like, a lot of times I came down to this, too. I compared winners. And Todd versus Parvati. Oh, it was really, really hard Mm. for for me in that case, Mm -hmm. too. But that's why I gave my vote to to China. It's just, like, when I looked at the, like, the entire cast, and this was 16 people versus 20 people Mm. that we're talking about here. So it's a much smaller cast and a lot more memorable people from my perspective of it. So that's why I chose China. Okay, Bob, give me heroes versus villains. Excuse me, fans yeah. versus favorites. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> fine. Maybe later, but let's focus on fans versus favorites right yeah. now. Do um, that challenge. <laughs> like, I really do. I like. I, I so agree with everything that Michael just said. This is such an incredibly Ooh. difficult I'm glad that's pairing. recorded. <laughs> that's a, it's an incredibly difficult pairing for me as well. But what I think about China, I'll start with China first. I think... <sighs> It's a great season. It is one of my favorite seasons. It has met my favorite cast mate. Amanda is my favorite cast mate ever for the entire Survivor series okay. um, in it. It just, I think it's an excellent season. I think it's a good, it, it's a good cast. It's a good season. Everything about it was really well constructed, put together. The story's told well. Um, there are only a few moments that stick out to me as saying as cast moments. And that's, you know, uh, James going home with both of the immunity idols. Um, I think PG got to go to the Great Wall. I think that Great Wall is, right? Didn't she get to go? Yes. yes I think she won the reward yeah. to go to the Great Wall, yes. <laughs> that reward was just a, such a beautiful reward to even see on television and not be there yourself, right? There's a few good moments in there, but I think about cast moments. I think about fans versus favorites. I think about 
this the immunity idol fake where eliza's like this is a fucking stick <laughs> to, to jason um i, I you know i think about eric's bonehead giving oh up God. his immunity to to natalie and natalie that desperation of natalie just to cling to those three women who were the previous castmates and she was the new castmate and just was like being pulled along by them and i don't think they really liked her all that much sure um no. you know poverty what is an iconic castmate just in the number of times she's been on the show the fact that she's her win there was so well put together pulling together the women she was so smart and she was so good at, like she really improved so much from her first season to be able to win this she knew exactly what she was doing she knew how to use her feminine wiles with james to continue to to help her like it's a really good cast in that regard from a from a cast moments perspective and just really their ability to pull themselves together for that win in the end and poverty being like no i'm gonna win this um and it's got Suri, and who doesn't love Suri? Oh my god! Oh wow, yeah. So, so for me, from a cast perspective, I think there's just for me there was more memorable moments to take away, and I love a good cast. I love that it's a split. Ca- I'm sorry. I love that it's a split cast between new people and existing players because that always creates a cool um, dynamic with folks. Are you going to pair with the with the old folks and the people who you may be fans for, or are you going to try to stick together and get the new folks out? Like, there's some fun stuff that happens there. So, Bob, I hear what you're saying about uh, fans versus favorites and, and and everybody that you love from the old cast coming back. My argument is that just about everybody that you love that's returning on fans versus favorites comes back in heroes versus villains. And I think it's a better season because there's a lot of weak performers on the fan side in fans versus favorites. Um, I look at someone like Chet or Kathy or Mary um, who don't really have what I consider to be great survivor moments in a positive way they're 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 kind of comic relief but they're not what i would consider to be great players um but that being said i'm gonna pass it to Corey. where are you coming down on this one yeah so i'm i'm personally sticking with my vote of uh fans versus favorites here because the people like the fans especially who came to play but weren't really playing the game very well I have to say I disagree in that I think that they did have moments like maybe not so much positive ones, but really good television. Like Kathy was just neurotic and didn't belong out there in any way, shape or form. <laughs> um, and yet still she had moments like when Yao Man pointed out the idol to her on the boat and she grabs it and jumps up and down with joy and um, Chet getting dragged through that damn challenge by Joel. I mean, this season, it's like, it's, I think that that's a little bit of a, a a parallel to how I feel about the season. Whereas that, where the people who may not have belonged there still got dragged along for the ride and made some good television. Uh, that's fair. And so we are currently tied. And what happens on a tie in a mini sode, since we don't have seeds, is that it's a round robin. I am the first tiebreaker, then it would go to Bob, then to Corey, then to Michael, then back to me. So as as much as I hate to use a tiebreaker in the first debate, uh, it looks like we I will. And I'm going to advance China here. Nothing against the fans versus favorites. But since so many of them are going to be on heroes versus villains, I, I want to advance uh, China instead. So uh, we are going to move on. Next, I am the sole survivor fan voting for survivor 18 token teens while the rest of the tribe wants to give another pass to survivor 30 31 cambodia aka second chances Corey will weather the storms and advocate for cambodia while i argue that we must protect jt at all costs and advance token teens <laughs> Corey, go ahead and take it for cambodia okay so for me when it comes to this season cambodia over um over uh token team <laughs> sorry um no, the, the thing why I'm, I picked Cambodia here is because this was a season unlike any other returning player season before or after in that this is the only other season besides All-Stars that had everybody that was coming back, they only were back for their second time. And so they were hungry for it. And that was the other thing is, is that this is the only season of all returning players that had no winners. So they were all hungry and they came to play and there were so many moments like um, even like moments with early boots, like with Shireen um, and, and Abby Maria, where Jeff even 
mentions a tribal to Shireen. This very much sounds like what happened in your season to you, Shireen, where you were the one being bullied. Only now you're the one being accused of the bullying. A lot of people's arcs from their previous seasons came back to haunt them in this one, sometimes in a positive way, sometimes in a negative way. I would say the same thing about Fishback. Um, and ironically, with him being paired up, his two seasons being paired up against each other, he was coming into this season haunted by the, uh, the, the, the JT thing, right? The, the golden boy. And he was obsessed, obsessed with getting out Joe. And yet, that's what bit him in the butt. So people's arcs came back to haunt them in their second time playing, which I just really loved this season because the storytelling and the cast itself gave so much for a good story. Yeah, I don't disagree with any of that. Cambodia is one of my favorite seasons. I think it's incredibly compelling for all the reasons you were saying. There's a lot of really good arcs in there. Um, it's kind of hero's journeys, but in a really like messed up funhouse mirror way. Um, it's also, I think, one of the most punishing seasons that they've done. I, I Obviously, Africa and Australia are notorious. for. You look at the rains that they were dealing with and the extreme heat and like the episodes where like Fishback is barely able to walk because his feet are so like waterlogged. It's 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 painful, but it's it's incredible television. Um, I don't expect to sway anybody from token te- or, or from Cambodia. I think it, it should advance, but I will say my piece for token teens. I actually don't care much for JT. Um, he's he's not one of my favorite winners. I will never understand his own tribe's just incessant adulation of him and never appearing to make a move, basically just giving him a million dollars. It n- never made sense to me. And uh, I, I frankly enjoy the fact that he's diminishing returns in every subsequent season where he's just more and more portrayed as just a buffoon. Um, but I think there are other great players in this season that are introduced. Fishback just got mentioned. He's an amazing second banana that doesn't ever actually take the shot. Uh, Aaron came out of nowhere to be a legit end game threat. Taj was incredibly likable, had a, a great backstory. One of our, our, um, few actual famous people that was able to play the game undercover and really not get busted in a serious way. I hope she'll come back at some point. Um, and then you've got two of our most iconic mid-series antagonists in Tyson and Coach, who, while I don't actually, I, I find both exhausting and very different reasons, um, you can't deny that they make for great television in every season that they're in. So um, the one demerit for Token Teens, I think, is that the early season boots are, are really not very memorable. With that being said, Bob and Michael, are you sticking with your vote for Cambodia? Yeah, yeah I'm st- I'm sticking with my vote for Cambodia. Um, I, you know, I think what, Corey has said has really argued really everything I would argue. And for me alone, Spencer is one of one of the most interesting players um, from a from a story arc perspective from his first season to his second. So, you know, I for Spencer alone, I would lean um, Cambodia. But yes, I'm going to stick with Cambodia. And Michael. Yeah, I'm sticking with Cambodia, too, because it has some of my favorite players really on here. Spencer, of course. I'm a huge Fishback fan. I loved him and everything that he did. And this was still a time when it was okay to like Varner. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) that's true. Uh, So that being said, it looks like Cambodia is moving forward. Wentworth does not count. Uh, So we will be saying goodbye to uh, Tolkien teens. Next, Bob wants to switch things up by being the sole proponent for Survivor 34 Game Changers, while the rest of us wanted to bring back the medevacs and newbies of Survivor 25 Philippines for another round. Bob, change our minds in favor of Game Changers. I will explain why I'm not flipping from Philippines. And Bob, you can go first. Okay, so how do you pick between two really great seasons? Um, You know, I really love Philippines, but I also really love Game Changers. And I think they both have some really great um, members of their casts in both of them. Um, both of them feature Malcolm, who is my absolute favorite and the love of my life. So, um, <laughs> at the end of the, at the end of the day, how do I pick between these? Really, I have to go with Game Changers. I, I love a cast that has returning players. I think they make stronger casts, in my opinion, and I know a lot of people would disagree with that. But I love to see people come back, get better, learn from their mistakes. I just think it is far more interesting to see some growth and some difference in people's gameplay from one season to the next. And I think that's amazing. And really, some of the great folks are back in this season. You have Suri, you have Ozzy, you have <clears throat> Malcolm, who's a great um, Tony, who well, I'll get to Tony later, but you just have some really great people that have come back for this. And you have Sarah, who, in my opinion, 
played one of the best games, if not the best game in the history of this show. She literally duped and fooled every single person on this entire cast to just hand over the award to her in the end. And it wasn't that they were just laying down and taking it. She was playing a strategic game. She was doing things behind the scenes that would trick people. She built the right relationships. She built the right trust with the right people so that they trusted her even though she was lying to their face. And I thought that that was amazing. And I think that she's amazing. And it is one of the best wins and the most deserving wins I've ever seen. And I thought it made for an incre- incredibly amazing television, incredible, incredibly amazing. Um, just, I keep, wanna call, I keep wanting to call them characters, but they're not characters, but I, I guess they have <laughs> some character. But anyway, that, that's really my argument behind Game Changers. I think it's a great cast with a great win um, with some really great um, classic, um, classic characters and classic cast members and um yeah that's where i'll leave it i agree that game changers is an a plus season it's really really good and sarah is amazing i i worship sarah i think the game she plays there is incredible and there are a lot of really good players in game player game changers the issue i have with game changers looking at it from an overall cast perspective is there's also some people included in that who have no business being there Haley, sierra like um I, I have to look at the overall strength of the cast and for me there's some real duds in that mix uh i also think the guy who was previously on big brother who got medevaced out of one of the other seasons uh, tell me the name you know guys the, the one that I ty was Caleb. Caleb, Caleb. That, yep. that's what I'm thinking of, right? Where, um, he, again, like, why was Caleb there? Like, it, it, it was they were throwing people in who really did not fit the brief of game changers and were kind of just there to be easy outs, I think. But, and to me, that harms the overall uh, kind of scope of the cast, but it's still a, a great season. I'm going to talk about Philippines, which I think is the best season in which returning players are mixed in to lead the tribes, uh, primarily new players. That's not saying much because Redemption Island is terrible. South Pacific is infuriating and Edge of Extinction is messy as fuck. But here, two thirds of the returning players are there to the very end. And the other is basically comic relief until his unceremonious booting, um, which I thought added a lot of great spice to the soup. But of those newbies, we have some real standouts. You've got Abby, Maria, and Malcolm in their first season, instant fan favorites. Denise is, in my opinion, one of the most deserving winners to ever play the game. And then you have Lisa fucking Welchel, who has this arc, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Like, she comes mm-hmm. in and she's trying to play the, like, I'm a celebrity, but I don't want anyone to know a celeb- what a celebrity is. Sidebar, how embarrassing for her that most of the people had no idea who she was. <laughs> but also, sidebar to my sidebar, shame on them because that is Blair um but um like and then as she's trying to figure out how you play this game and how it literally is like tearing her apart Lisa um (laughs) to realize that she has to do horrible things to people to win and make it to the end and then you have to say like Jeff Kent also has an incredible arc. RC and Pete have their fans as well. It is a great overall cast. And I realize that the main demerit for this season is the fact that Michael Scoopin got like so close to winning. But I truly believe, ladies and gentlemen, I truly believe (laughs) that if you watch the season through the lens of God punishing Michael (laughs) over and over again, it's actually super satisfying. There you go. That's my argument for the Philippines. I'm going to toss it to Michael, who I believe has something to say about another returning player. Right. So when you look at, for me, these two seasons, this was a hard one for me too, because I agree. Sarah is one, when we got to winners at war, I was team Sarah right from the beginning for it. So I love Sarah to death. I think she's, this was a perfect season, perfect game for her. And then there's Denise because I remember being at the bar for winners at war. And when Denise's tribe wins the immunity, somebody stands up and screams, Denise isn't going to tribal. And the entire <laughs> bar just explodes <laughs> clapping. Because <laughs> it's like she Denise makes it through her entire season attending every single tribal council, you know, and she goes on for the win. And I, I agree. Like, Abby Maria, although she, uh, like, she knows how to tap dance on my last gay nerve, I, like she's amazing to fun to play Malcolm too. You know, there's eye candy in Carter who I love. Um, and yes, Lisa Welchel is out there learning about the facts of life. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and play, and you know, despite being so clueless at the beginning plays an amazing game, but that just leads me to my survivor love, my survivor crush. You know, there have been a lot of attractive men on a survivor over the years, 
But if you're listening, Jonathan Penner, call me. <laughs> ah. I am in love with Jonathan Penner. I think that not only is he a, an uber attractive man, hot as hell as far as I'm concerned. Those eyes and that voice. Like, well, oh my God. Yeah. And, that, and not even just that, like, then this is literally where the personality comes in. You know, when it comes down to it, fuck Marianne, kill this man for me as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> wow. I, I love Jonathan Penner and having gotten to see him in multiple seasons, you know, was really just a, a plus for me. And um, I really hope that there is one more chance for him at some point in the future <laughs> if they do it. Because he, like, out of all the players that have returned multiple times, he is one of the few that I think still deserves a win because he learns something every time he plays. Mm-hmm. Him and Siri, I think, are in the same. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the same. So I, what I'm hearing from all this is your vote is for Survivor Penner Island. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's a tribe of two, me and him. Uh, uh-huh. And you both I go to looking, Exile Island. I keep Ooh. looking at these lists of people and I can't, I keep going back between these two casts and I'm just like, maybe I like Philippines now. I don't know. <laughs> it, like, it's, I forgot about Carter. Put a bag over his head, but come on. <laughs> 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 so in all seriously though michael you're your team philippines i am team philippines oh. and Corey, how about you i'm team philippines all the way here um i do have to say that i agree with everything that has been said about sarah i think that if you look at the two winners of these seasons i think the edge goes to sarah but in terms of as a cast uh penner he's what uh, i'm a straight male but i gotta tell you right now i love penner we're not going to hold that against you, Corey. The fact Penner. that you're great now. I love Penner. <laughs> okay. He knows how to tell a good story mm-hmm. and he tells it so well and so eloquently. I mean, he's just one of the greatest characters. So bringing him back is an automatic. So when it comes to scooping, I think only be- about how I felt when the season aired, not about how we think of him now since sure. this season happened, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. When this sure. season was airing, I see Penner come on. I'm excited as hell. Then I see Scoopin, and then Russell Swan. I didn't care as much about, but he was really entertaining for the four episodes he was on this season. But yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, I was excited about Scoopin because I loved watching him back in Australia now, back and was heartbroken over what happened to him. I so- loved watching him burn his hands to a crisp. <laughs> I mean, that was a moment though, right? Yeah. Like I remember watching, like none of us knew that was coming and it was no, absolutely shocking. It shocked it us was. all. It was absolutely difficult to watch. It sure. shocked us to our core. And that, But he also had moments like chasing the boar with a spear and, and all sorts of stuff. But okay, that's just the returning players. Then you've got the original cast members. Like you got to have good bad guys. You got Abby Maria, you got Pete, you got Artis, and then as sweet as Lisa is, she played the most villainous game of everyone this season. I mean, good guys, bad guys all across the board on this cast of original people. I got to go with Philippines. There's just nothing interesting in terms of story arc, in terms of the people in Game Changers. Besides Sarah, who I think really does have an amazing like rise from the ashes moment. Right. Yeah, uh, Sarah coming back and playing completely different is a good story arc. But what you said earlier about duds on Game Changers, you're absolutely right. And I would go so far as to say the two people who made it to the end with Sarah were duds. Cole Pepper had no right being there. Troy Zan, you could make a case for being oh. there, but he was a dud, I thought, too. Yes. So. Troy Zan was in Game Changers? That's a joke. I know he was there. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't light up the comments yet. Exactly. All right, so he he- Final Tribal? I mean, maybe we should ask the jury if they noticed he was there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I'm hearing three votes for Philippines. Unless, Bob, are you about to vote against yourself for Game Changers? I want to apologize to Carter. I think he's very handsome these days if you follow his Instagram. <laughs> and I do. Um, <laughs> yes, me too. Um, I'll I'll totally flip a, for, flip for Phili- Philippines or flip. flip for Malcolm, I guess. There you go. I mean, you honestly, go. though, you'd be flipping for either one of those casts because he's on both. But True. All right, we're going to give the win to Philippines next. The panel was unanimous in its decision to advance Survivor 7, Pearl Islands, over Survivor 29, San Juan del Sur, a.k.a. Blood versus Water 2. Three quarters of us were into the generational divide of Survivor 33, Millennials versus Gen X, while Corey was out there on his own preferring Survivor 12, Panama, a.k.a. Exile Island. Corey, mm-hmm. why shouldn't we travel through Panama? While Michael explains why everyone but boomers should appreciate millennials versus Gen X, I'm going to have Corey go first. Okay, so for me personally, um, 
Um, Millennials versus Gen X was actually a very important season for me because I had stopped watching Survivor for years. Millennials versus Gen X was the first season I got back into Survivor. The cast was a, was a lovely cast. It was great personalities. I loved the season. It's one of my favorites because of that. But when I think back to old school seasons of Survivor, um, there's just not very many seasons that have the iconic moments that make Survivor the show that I feel that it is, which is putting a bunch of strangers on an island and just seeing what happens. And you see a hell of a lot in Panama with Shane on his Blackberry and then going to sit on his thinking still or thinking bench and screaming at people, telling him he was going to kill him. I mean, then you got Courtney <clears throat> who took everything personally, Danielle, Sari in her very first season ever, um, which is the season in which we all came to love her, love her. Um, and then you've even got people like, you know, I, w- I wasn't as enthusiastic about RS as other people were at the time, but I can th- look back on it now and look at the, I just, I, I, I love the cast. I love the cast of this season because it was so diverse in terms of the personalities and there was good guys, bad guys all across the board. You're rooting for Terry. You're kind of not because he's kind of being a dick at times too. I, it was a very complex season for me. Whereas with millennials versus gen X, I sort of had my people picked early on and then there wasn't as much complexity. And I wasn't finding myself swaying in terms of one way or the other. I liked David and Ken and I liked one or two other people. Jay, I, I did start to turn turn an opinion on. But aside from that, in terms of an original cast of people, I, Panama for me all the way. All right. Michael, what have you got from Millennials versus Gen X? So when it came down to it, when I was looking at the cast, I went through each of the cast and I'm like, who stood out to me? Who do I remember still? You know, and I know Panama was season 12. So we're talking a very long time ago and Millennials is most more recent. But like for me, Panama... RS, of course, you know, we know all the winners and everything. And I'm kind of, when it comes down to it, it's kind of a meh for me when it comes down to our RS's win. Still deserved. I never argue with a winner didn't deserve it. But then I look at the rest of the cast and Sari and Terry are the only other ones that I can like go, oh yeah, I remember them. I remember what they were like and everything like that. But when it comes down to it, I think that Millennials versus Gen X had a a cast of characters that really... Um, just stood out for you. Like Michaela was there. We just talked about her because she comes back the next season for Game Changers. Love Michaela. You. Love I Michaela. Didn't see, I didn't see why she should have been, but I understand. Yeah, no, I think that I think Michaela did have a right in Game Changers. She had an opportunity, and think that um, you know she did well. She went further in her second season than she did in her first. Um, this is our first um, set of with Zeke on him on there for us and everything. So mm-hmm. we get our first thing. Um, Jay David Wright. Um, I think Adam Klein was a, a, a fun winner for us. Um, and then, like, I don't know, may be recency bias or something like that, but Sunday comes up a lot, too, you know, who recently passed away. Um, oh, my but, gosh, I didn't know that. Uh, see, yeah. Sunday didn't do anything for me that season. That's I, sad. She was I, a dud on the season. I'm sorry. That's okay. She's a real I mean, mom, right? That's I, that's what she brings to me. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry, you know, Michael. Yeah, she. I think that she brought a certain, like, almost stability normalness to the show mm-hmm. that can sometimes be very chaotic and very mm-hmm. crazy at times, you know, and she gets to seventh place in that. And cause she's working those relationships that, that she has with people. She, mm-hmm. she holds her own in the challenges and everything, but she's not the standout challenge person. Um, but I just feel like overall, and then you have this whole cultural difference between millennials and gen X people, mm-hmm. you know, the whole that we're going to test the theory are the Gen X hardworking people and the millennials the spoiled brats kind of thing. And you know, I think that there are moments that they edited perfectly to show that divide, but that overall, you know, we come out to see that they're all survivors, that they're all going to make it through this and everything, too. But can we also talk about how amazing it was that they happened to look into, look into <laughs> the, that first episode, the hurricane's coming. The, like, oh. you, could, you couldn't have written this. The Gen X is all like, okay, we really need to get our shit together. Cause there's a fucking yeah. hurricane coming. And the millennials are over there, like doing each other's hair and like having a party. <laughs> yes. And they're like, yeah, we're on the beach. And it's like, <laughs> death is coming. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I, I said it before guys, I love, Millennials versus Gen X. And this was one of the right. more difficult choices, but 
I, I hear that. So, Bob, I want to get your vote first. Where are you on this yeah, one? They're all difficult choices. I'm yeah. going to put it that way, right? I'll, yeah. I think Millennials is probably going to go through. So really, all I want to say about it is I for this, for me, there was such a moment in this season um, where Adam and Jay really ended up developing oh, a really yes. close friendship before the end. They were sort of enemies in the beginning. It was everybody mm-hmm. against Adam, right? But they grew so close. Yep. And there was a moment in the tr- in the final tribal in the in the jury where Jay basically stands up there and asks him, like, why did you send me home? What happened? And Adam looks him in the eyes and said, because you were in the way. And that is such a respectful thing to do um, during your jury to just be straightforward and honest. And mm-hmm. they had such a good relationship. I just thought it was such a great moment and showed me showed me in that moment why Adam deserved to win that season. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, I walk away from that thinking about that moment as something really great for me that made that such a special season, along with some other things, which I, I don't think I'll get into just yet because I, I feel like it's going to go through, but yeah. we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um. So here's the deal. I think Corey makes some great points in that Panama has a few real superstar players. Uh, Suri, no question. Uh, Terry, no question. I actually loved the Terry Eris dynamic. Um, oh, it yeah. totally made me hot for Terry. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, ter- I'm sorry. the Terry Aris thing just drove me crazy. I loved Aris so much. Wanted to well, marry him at the time until I, I met Mel. The, the loved- Terry reward with his wife must have really broke you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was fine loving him from afar. That's okay. Um, but you also, like, Shane is a great villain. Like, I hated him. He but is. that shows you how good of a villain he is. Um, and I do think that Courtney, yeah, she took things personally, but like <laughs> I would take it personally if someone said, I will come to your apartment and murder you as well. So oh. I got it. But even, um, even with Shane being the villain he was, when his son comes out there for the reward, I mean, there's just so, so much complexity. Yeah, and, and I also get that like Shane was was playing a character and was probably on some kind of withdrawal when he was on the <laughs> island, which is probably not helping his personality. Um, but w- beyond those like four or five, to me, it's the rest of a cast of all. Even Danielle, who makes it to the bitter end. D- like when Danielle showed up again in Heroes vs. Villains, I literally was like, who? Who are you? <laughs> like, well, see, as, a, as, as, as a straight male i can honestly tell you guys i recognized her right away and went "Ooh, i remember this one oh i'm so <laughs> glad we brought that perspective to this podcast exactly this i'm grateful for it wow you know, i never would have that. known this that's that's good and i do i no shade on that one because like for me as a gay man watching i was like what do you bring to the table danielle <laughs> but, but i'm glad to have a straight man being like oh no trust me she's bringing plenty um <laughs> <laughs> So I hear that we have like this this bright light of like four or five from Panama. But when I look at millennials versus Gen X, I think that there are very few that are at the same level of superstar as those five. But I think on the whole, that cast is higher. Like from the beginning, like Marie going out first, like Marie was everyone thought she was going to be a big deal. And she had personality. She was the first boot. Um, I loved the Bickersons on the Gen X groups just sniping (laughs) at each other right from the start. I was like, this is compelling television. Television. And like none of those people lasted past like episode four. Um, you had what is his face? The one who stole the food. Taylor. Yeah. Taylor. I wanted to drown him. It made me irrationally angry. <laughs> Um, and the whole showmance with that other girl, like Figgy. there was Michelle Figgy, Figgy. Thank you. Um, like, so for me, there was like, uh, you also have, um, Hannah, like that whole arc, yep. like to me, are they as like legendary as those four or five from Panama? No, but on the whole, almost every member of the cast of millennials versus Gen X made an impact for me. So They're for all that who? reason, who? They're all a hoot. They are. Like, yes. it was a very, and, oh, and that yeah. was a very fast paced game. That one, like, you couldn't sleep for a second. And I think it's going through because Bob staying Millennials versus Gen X, I'm Millennials versus Gen X, and uh, so is Michael. So I'm going to okay. save my discussions on Brett for later, but I'm sorry, Corey. That means Panama. That's going okay. Down. That's okay. It was a good debate. It was. One could say a great pop culture debate. Um, So (laughs) next up in another three to one decision, the majority of us appreciated the bold and brash newbies of Survivor 28, Kai Gayan, to the star-studded cast of Survivor 8, All Stars. Bob, explain why Jeff was wise to bring back his best castaways. Well, I will explain why Kai Gayan has the brains, beauty, and the bronze to go all the way. Go ahead, Bob. 
Oh, here we go again with me being the, lo- <laughs> the lone survivor out here on You're a just with this, wrong with this You're cast. You're survivor. And again, it comes at me, and I'm going to say it again, right? I love these casts that have returning people that you, you're able to see, you know, a difference between their first round versus their second round playing this game. But really, this is this is some classic survivor from a cast perspective. It really gives us the roots of this series and shows us why we loved it from, from the very beginning um, mm-hmm. with the characters that we truly loved from the very beginning. has a great cast, some great um, returns um, with Amber and Rob. You have that whole arc and that whole situation yes i did watch their wedding um, amber smoking i felt i watched i picked up with um the amazing race watching them and that's you know you know i've i've followed them from (laughs) to the ends of the earth i've followed them but um you know so you have that story you have tina wesson coming back with her wessonality and (laughs) wessonality wessonality means crisp and this is a very crisp cast (laughs) So wow, uh, um, <laughs> you, you, you know you had the Sue and Richard moment, which was Ugh. you know the Sue, which was the Sue and Richard moment, right? Like yeah. so, yes, um, which became so uncomfortable, and um, you know, you know, I just it's just so much, it's just so many folks that are coming back that are really classic, really great players, really give us the history and and the the um the the classic gameplay and just really the roots of this whole show. Um, not to mention the fact that Rupert's there, so. Um, that's really me for all stars. Um, and I'll leave it there for you. Eric. So he- here's my thing. I almost feel like all stars and winners at war cheat a little bit because yeah, they're amazing casts. They're like the best players. Right. Yeah. Um, but, um, I, and here's the thing. I actually think all stars is better than a lot of people give it credit. Um, it, it gets a lot of shit in the fandom so I hear the um, the argument that there, it's a great cast. It is. It's a le- it's literally legends. All Stars is a, is a legends cast, um, and I do think it's an overall a good season. But um, I I personally have a very hard time getting past the Sue Richard moment. It is a a black mark on that season, the same way that Dan is on Island of the Idols. Um, and I guess maybe that shouldn't really be weighing into my opinion on a discussion about casts overall because both of them needed to be in that cast, right? Um, mm-hmm. I'll also give you credit for it. This is the beginning of the Rupert being exposed as a buffoon arc, which I love. <laughs> yes. um, that sequence where he's building the shelter on the beach and you have Jerry, like the villain who's like now like the Greek chorus for the viewers. He's like, oh, this is a terrible idea. We're all going to die. Like, it's just- I feel so bad for Jerry because she was so hated and she's the only one talking logic. The only one. And I was like, listen to Jerry Manthe. She's trying to save you. Um, and you should literally never listen to Jerry Manthe. Yes. <laughs> but I have to say, like, she gets better every time she comes back. So I'm hoping for, like, one more Jerry season when she wins it all. Anyway, I'm off topic. Um, but so why I'm giving Kagayan the edge here, even though All Stars is 100% legends, like, literally, is Kagayan is 100% fresh meat, and they're great. Um, it's the first Bra- Beauty Brains Brawn uh, concept, correct? Correct? Yes. Yes. And it really worked beautifully here. We had a great mix of super memorable early boots and amazing jury members. Garrett is an awesome early season villain. Jatia is a legend. Let's just put that <laughs> right out. Oh, God. Jatia is amazing <laughs> television. Was someone saying something about my girl to Jatia? What? <laughs> I didn't think what? I'm going to take your rice and I'm going to throw it on the ground. Um, uh, she got voted out fourth before absolutely wreaking havoc for an entire month on this show. Um, Sarah gets bounced seventh in one of her, like the great surprise boots of all time. And then like the early merge boots are not particularly memorable. I'm going to give you that. But then you've got that at final six, Tasha, Trish, Spencer, Cass, Wu, oh, yeah. Tony, unimpeachable. I think out of all of them, maybe only Trish would be the only one who could not win a season on their own. I really, truly believe that mm-hmm. every one of the rest of them could win a season. And so for me, I think it is one of our very best casts. And I don't think I would change a thing about it. So I'm going to give it to Corey. Where are you coming down on this one? Okay, so in ter- it, 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 this is the thing, right? All Stars, I agree, gets a lot of bad rap. It gets a bad rap, but and it does remind us of why we love every single one of these people in the first place, their first time they played, but this is not their first time. This is their second time. We are, it's, it's, so I am giving the edge towards the original cast here for that reason, but all, for that's one of the reasons I look at Kagiyan. 
And like what you said, Bob, you said that All Stars reminded us of what we loved about Survivor in the first place. Kagi Yan, in an age where we had had a string of pretty bad seasons and then a few good, a decent ones like Blood versus Water mixed in, Kagi Yan, as an original cast, felt like I was watching it and I'm watching fights between Tony and Cass and, and Trish and Cass and Trish and Lindsay. And I'm watching it going, this reminds me of why I loved Australian Outback. This is what, this is why I loved, you know, uh, Johnny Fairplay and Rupert, Rupert almost strangling him. Like it reminded me of the old days in a, in the new era of survivor. And as an original cast, it's impeccable. It's Im- it's impeccable. You cannot find a weak spot in this cast at all. Even Wu, bless his heart, as a terrible, terrible player of Survivor, that moment Eric where he's seems like, to think he could win um, a cast on so, his own. At, at that moment, I, one of my favorite moments of the season is when Wu is sitting there trying to remember. He's like, so if we tie at Final Four, do we go to Rocks? The, the jury votes? Do we fight for it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just... It was in an era of Survivor where we needed that reminder of what made us fall in love with the show in the first place. In an era when all we're watching is mostly, you know, some dud seasons leading up to it. And then it's just a almost a purely strategical game. Kageon showed the personalities of people who play this game. Yeah, and I will stand by my uh, thing that Wu could win a season. If Fabio Mm -hmm. can win a season as a lovable (laughs) dolt, Wu can win a season as a lovable dolt. Um, Wu would have won if Cass had had voted out Tony. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, Michael. Um, I I think that I look at it as like, so Kagayan, absolutely. I was actually in my bagel place and they had the first two episodes on the other day. And I literally got stuck there for an hour and a half just watching through those first two episodes. <laughs> oh. and, and 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 it's that moment where Jatia dumps the rice into the fire. They go to tribal <laughs> and yet they still do not vote her out. You know, Garrett goes home. This nope. woman is an icon. <laughs> just... It's like she's <laughs> like, you know, again, uh, Jatia, call me. I want to have drinks with you, girl. Exactly. Um, but um, the, again, All Stars is a great season. You know, I think that after eight seasons, it was a little early. to They should have waited a little bit more and had more to people to pull from. And I, when I look at All Stars, I do enjoy the season and everything. But I look at it kind of similar to Winners at War in a certain respect in that not everybody's playing like a hundred percent of their game because they've been through this before. It's kind of like a it, everyone's a little bit more laid back. Most of the players do not measure up to what they did their first seasons. And yes, we get the whole Rupert's not as cool as we all thought he was arc that starts here too. And yet they continue to bring him back and everything like that. But um, I, I just I don't love All Stars, but I do love Kagayan. The the one last thing I'll say on All Stars is this was the first instance where you had pre-existing relationships dramatically impacting the gameplay, and you saw that all over All Stars. That's what led to the Lex, Kathy, like, incredible hurt with Rob, which was fascinating to watch as an audience member. Like, we'd never seen anything like this. Like, these people were genuinely betrayed by their actual real-world friend. And to see that pain, like, it was both fascinating, but also it was like, but you're going on this game to play the game, not to, like, rely on relationships that you'd made outside of the show. Um, But it's still a really interesting season, and I'm not taking anything away with it. I just think cast-wise, I'm giving the edge to Kagayan, and we are, in fact, going to advance that one next up uh finally there were two more unanimous decisions in round one as survivor 13 cook island stampeded the casts and elephants of survivor 17 gabon and survivor 20 heroes versus villains was deemed the superior all returnee season to survivor 40 winners at war so that is it for round one i'm gonna go hop on a jet ski and travel back to new york harbor so we can tally the votes live at the cbs studio we'll be back after this break (laughs) If you listen to the great pop culture debate, but you aren't one of our Patreon subscribers, honey, you are missing out. 
Patreons at the $5 level get exclusive access to the part ones for each main episode with arguments you won't hear anywhere else. Patreons at the $10 level also get a free piece of GPCD Premium merch. And Patreons at the $25 level get all of the above, plus they get to pick a mini-so topic for us to record. And guess what? You get to join the panel, too. And those are only some of the perks. Welcome back to round two of our Best Survivor Cast debate. Before we get to the merge, a.k.a. the Elite Eight, I want to ask my panel, how can people follow you on social media? Bob? Uh, you can find me at DizNerdBob um, on all the things, the Twitter, the IG, etc. Um, that's DizNerdBob, and yes, it's a, yes, it is a Disney reference. I, I would assume that it was. Um, Corey, how about yourself? All right, so my yeah, on, on Facebook, I'm Corey.Conway.3, and then Instagram, uh, I am Conway Corey, all lowercase. So, and Mr. Schwarz, um, you can find me on Instagram at Therax T H E R A X three twenty nine. Great. And as for me, you should definitely follow at Great Pop Culture Debate on Instagram and at Culture underscore Debate on Twitter. But feel free to follow at Eric Resniak on Instagram as well. That's uh, E-R-I-C, R-E-Z as in zebra, S as in snake, N as in Nancy, Y-A-K. Thanks, Mom, for teaching me how to spell that one. Uh, moving on to the <laughs> debates. First up, we have China versus Cambodia, Second Chances, uh, an Asian persuasion battle. I'm going to start by asking, Bob, which one do you vote? for here uh, uh, tough pick i think i'm gonna go cambodia all right michael oh god this is killing me um i'm gonna go china on this one all right Corey. i guess i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go with cambodia on this one I find myself also leading to cambodia and my rationale for that is that China has, again, some really amazing players, especially late in the game. Um, Amanda. Courtney is amazing. Um, <laughs> yes. Let me just say that. Um, <laughs> and I did not fully appreciate her in my first viewing. Um, but I feel like Cambodia, I would not have changed any casting in Cambodia. I would have had every single one of those people there. Yes, even Varner. Yeah. I, I think he did deserve a second chance the first time. Um and I think that that season, man, they went through it. But so that's three to one. Uh, do you want to say anything to argue for China, Michael? Do you want to try to sway us? No, and, and I, I agree that like there are some amazing people. But again, we're talking about people that are coming back again and people that we know. And yeah, they. this is one of the exceptions to return these seasons where a lot of them just played. They may not have made it as far, but they played better than the first time around. But still, like China for me, it's the original cast and literally – yeah, there are some of the people, like, other than Steve Chicken Morris, the first boot of the season, some of the yeah, early right. ones are are not as memorable for it. But then when you do get to, like, to the merge and you're looking at it, it's like, it's John Robert, it's Frosty, it's James and the double idol in his pocket mm. go out. You know, <laughs> PG, Amanda, Courtney, and Todd. Todd was just such, a, like, Todd really controlled that game right from the beginning. Yes, he did. For everything for it and you know jeremy i i'm a fan of jeremy and he deserved his win on second chances but he wasn't nearly controlling as much in that entire game and a lot of these people on second chances are personalities that we knew and we just got to know them a little bit better i don't know that some of them were not as like i i, I just don't think that they it holds up to what china brings to the table as a new and original cast my argument against that, and I respect everything you just said. I hope that goes no, without saying. I do. I respect you and I love you. Um, is that for me, some of those people on Cambodia felt like they were playing for the first time. Wentworth came out of nowhere. Yes. Yes. Um, Jeremy, that was the rise of Kelly Wentworth. And, and, <laughs> yes. and my God, she was glorious to behold that whole season. Um, I felt like even Abby Maria was like playing this time more than she was the last time in which I felt like she was just trying to survive like each episode. Sitting out. Yeah. Like I felt like she was more engaged this time. It just to me, I felt like there were people who I never paid. I mean, Kimmy was, was in the mix this time. And I really like, it's funny because Jeremy, I respect the hell out of him at now, but the first time I watched blood versus water, I was like, I'm not understanding the allure here, but I got it watching Cambodia fully. Um, so I hear what you're saying that it's returnees and they're playing as good or if not better, but some of them to me were just like a completely new version of themselves. Mm. So they felt mm. like new players to me. 
for me, it you know, if, when you go through that list of Cambodia, if you could just read the list to, to me, like maybe it's just maybe it is just me, but it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you go through this is who's on this cast. Do you want to watch? If you say those names, I'm gonna be like, oh, yeah, those all sound great together. Yeah, because um, they're all really great players. They are. They are. So, uh, Corey, Bob, are you sticking with Cambodia? Yes. Okay, so Cambodia advances. Sorry, China. Sorry, Michael. You're all entitled to your wrong opinion. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Next up, it's Philippines versus Pearl Islands. Uh, I'm going to start with Corey. Where are you on this one? Uh, I'm going with Pearl Islands on this one. I just uh, old school. I, I I I am an old school lover of Survivor, and uh, with this season, it's just you get everything. You know, and, and it led right up into All Stars beautifully as well. When you look at the overall arc of when seasons happened, you know, when you look back on seasons, I mean, it's just, yeah, I, I it's this is a really tough one for me, but I am gonna go with Pearl Islands on this, Bob. I have a tough time. Oh, these are so tough. This is I like know. Sophie's yeah. choice every round. Oh, Sophie's, it's really, Sophie's really not catch. in any of these seasons, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, that's true. That's very true. Winners and you stay right there, Sophie. <laughs> Except anyway. for you, Sophie. <laughs> um, it's so hard to pick. I love Welchel. I love Malcolm. Denise is so amazing. But you have Sandra in Pearl Islands. And for me, I watched during pandemic. I watched every season and that's how i became the survivor lover that i am i hadn't seen these originally and when i watched pearl islands that was when i when it clicked for me to say wow this is a fun show like this is i know why i love this now and it's because Mm -hmm. of this cast yeah Um, i have to go with pearl islands michael god why do i feel like i'm gonna be the odd man out on this one again well like queen stays queen forever and Sandra mm-hmm. is like it will be the queen forever, regardless of anything else that ever happens again. And you and we were talking about this before we started recording, like Lil and Burton coming back from the outcasts, you know, and having their second chance for them here. And you know, Andrew Savage is here, and this is, this is our first look at Rupert. When we think, oh my God, isn't that like big hippie bear guy kind of c- cool and everything to watch and everything? Oh, later if we weren't so disappointed, um, but. I have to go back to Philippines because of, you know, and it's, it's Denise, it's Lisa. It's, it, bless you. It's Abby Marie. It's, it's the love of my, my, my life. Call me Jonathan Penner um, <laughs> for us and everything. So, but yeah, I'm going to stick with Philippines, even though I think I'm in the minority again this time. Well, I have good news for you and I have bad news. What do you want first? It's you. So I'm used to the bad news first. Right. So the bad news is that um, you're right. You're the odd man out. The good news is that you're right. So congratulations on being correct. Um, but I, hate you. I know. Um, but yeah, I'm going with Pearl Islands here. And I think Bob really touched on something. Pearl Islands came in when uh, there had been a couple, in my opinion, and people will yell at me for this, but I think that Marquesas and uh, – this is not a, a, a hot take, but everyone knows that Thailand is a, is a garbage season. Oh but those two seasons, and I thought Amazon was actually really good, but Survivor had begun its slump, right? Like that was the beginning of the decline. But man, Pearl Islands came in and that cast was just dynamite. It, and it was fun. Like that whole cast from the jump, like people are stealing people's shit in Shoes. the town. <laughs> um, th- there's full nudity in the immunity challenge and in, not in a creepy sexual harassment way Richard um like there's to me the cast um and there are some really forgettable players in that cast I'm not gonna lie to you about that but the ones who are there and I think this is true of a lot of our earlier seasons the superstars are clearly superstars and man Pearl Islands is loaded with them I love Philippines for every reason I I think I combated for it very hard in the first round but I'm giving it to Pearl Islands here so uh that is three to one Pearl anything else you want to say for for uh, Philippines before we bid it adieu Michael no, I'm good. Jonathan, call me. Call him. No, come oh. call me. <laughs> uh, next up, it's Millennials versus Gen X versus Kagayan. I feel like these two seasons have kind of a similar energy. Um, and I'm going to start with Michael. Where are you? Oh, this one, like, this is probably the hardest out of the, uh, out of this bracket for me and everything like that. Um, because I love, I love these two seasons and they're so close together you know, 28 and 33, I think that they, they play with the same sort of energy that Survivor's putting off at this time. We're in the new school era. You know, so much is happening. Um, uh, 
I like in terms of casts, there there are some amazing casts, but I think that in this case, really, I'm going to go with Kagayan because I mean I think that one of the reasons too is that it's a it's just a cast. It's not also a cast with a message that they're trying to send, which is yes. like when they millennials versus Gen X. This is just a cast of people that are going out there to play. They're not trying to prove anything other than themselves. They're not defending a generational stereotype or anything like that. But, um, and you know, my girl, Sarah, you know, is just on this and goes out and comes back and has her win and everything. But yeah, I'm going to go Kagaya on this, on this one. Okay. Corey, what about you? Uh, Kagi on all the way. I mean, I, I, like I said to you guys before, I love millennials versus gen X. It holds a special place in my heart. But there are when looking at these two original casts, it's like you guys said before, there's not a single dud, I feel like, in Kagiyan. Whereas even in Millennials vs. Gen X, even though we have such amazing characters and people in the later stage of the game, like Polly and some of the other people um, that went early in the season in Millennials vs. Gen X, they, they, they're just complete and total duds. Yeah, I, I can see that completely. Bob, what are you? I have to go with Millennials versus Gen X on this one. Um, I thought this was a great season. I, it may be the editing, but I thought it was so well cast with the two generations. Like you couldn't have picked more quintessential folks from these two generations to represent. Um, again, it could have been the editing. Um, I think you mentioned, you know, the storm where the, the, where the millennials My are like, God. to our hair. You know, it was Incredible. just so, it was just, it's so well cast. There's so many, to me, there's a lot of memorable people. The Kagayan Pete thing for me is I, I can't stand Tony. You may disagree with this. I feel like those folks just, I don't know as though they played hard enough to beat Tony in the end. And like, I think they kind of just let him kind of do it and go. Um and really the first half of that, you guys keep talking about how they memorable these people are. And like the first half of that season, I, other than Jatia, I'm like, who are these people? Um, until we get to Tasha, I don't really know who we're talking about. I can't even visualize or picture them in my brain. Interesting. Um, so that's where I am with that. I, I love them both. Again, Sophie's choice. Um, but the Tony of it all just turns me off. Um, I hear you. And I have very conflicting feelings on Tony. And I will also add that like when Winners at War started, I was like, oh, Tony. Um, so when I'm watching it and Tony is dominating that game, like stepping on its neck, um, I was just like, fuck me. He is going to take this whole thing. And that's when I was just like, you know, you've been dismissive of Tony's gameplay, but Tony's actually really good at this game. Um, he overplayed his hand in uh, what was it? Was it second chances or was it game, uh, changers? game changers? Yeah, game changers. So he messed with the queen. He did. He he he, he overplayed. Um, but but he was amazing in both of these games. Now, I actually don't think that they rolled over and gave it to him in Kagayan. I mean, I think Cass was playing hard. I think that Spencer was playing hard. Oh, very I think much so. Tasha was playing hard. The problem was they were all playing against each other, and Tony just sat there in the pocket and let them, which is really, really smart, right? Like, why not let my enemies take each other out? Um, and he would, you know, kind of go where he needed to go to make that happen. But for me, I'm giving it to Kagayan as well. I hear what you're saying, Bob, that you don't feel that the early season ones are as strong as the Millennials versus Gen X, which I think on the whole, again, has a very good level of moments for almost every character. But I do think that in this particular case, Kagayan outweighs it. I do want to say this for Millennials versus Gen X. I briefly alluded to this. Um, Brett, the gay cop, I thought was such a great casting, and I never saw him coming. Mm -hmm. And um, I just adore him. And I, I thought, because he has a reward dinner with Zeke, right? Where the two yes, of them are correct. at the beach. Yep, that's where he tells Zeke. Mm -hmm. He tells Zeke. And yep. Zeke does not self-disclose, which I completely understand. But it like that was such a beautiful moment. And um we don't get a lot of those in Survivor. So I thought Millennials versus Gen X, um, yeah, it's like a message season, but it has a lot of heart as well as great gameplay. I'm still giving it to Kagayan in terms of, God damn, that was a scrappy bunch of people. Like they mm -hmm. they they were at each other's throats. So we are advancing Kagayan. Finally, in the Elite Eight, it's Cook Islands versus Heroes versus Villains. This, to me, is the hardest one in the group. And I'm going to start with Michael Schwartz. I started last time. Okay, never mind. Then we we'll start with Corey. Uh, this is actually not that hard for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Heroes versus Villains takes it all the way. I mean, this is 
of all the returnee player seasons, heroes versus villains. I think uh, who said it before where they said that they wouldn't change a single casting on second chances. Um, I could see a few, like a, a couple of players I might switch in and out of, of second chance, but not heroes versus villains. You know, even the people who went out super early, um, like Randy in this, he, he's he's an iconic villain. Regardless of what happens to him in heroes versus villains, coming into the season itself after what he did on Gabon, I mean. Uh, heroes versus villains just takes the cake and it, it doesn't even it's not even close in my opinion okay all right uh bob uh, i know i i i don't think it's actually that hard for me either to pick but i'm picking cook islands <laughs> um, Whoa. it's 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 really it is really tough i guess when i think about it a little bit harder because you know you have the sandra in heroes versus villain you have you have poverty you have Rupert you you have you have those classic folks there I get that they're villains but so many of the villains that they picked and they have are just real turnoffs for me I can't I can't handle Russell I just can't handle him um Randy is amazing (laughs) but um like Tyson uh coach like those those players are are a real turnoff for me I I get that they're villains but I I don't think they're a twinkle in your eye type villain I think that they're really kind of really messy <laughs> um i don't want to i'm trying not to be too negative on people here but um you know cook islands for me is second to um pearl islands it's one of the first seasons i watched during my binge of everything but i just really loved um you know here i am with a, a you know a non-returning cast I'm, i've been debating the returning cast up until this point but this brought us some of the great people that we that we know and love we have ozzy we have parv We've got um, Yule, who was a great winner, um, who I don't think came back until Winners at War, right? That was his first time back? Correct. Uh, But what a great winner and a great game that he played. It showed me in that season what a good playing, what what playing a game, what playing a Survivor game well would look like. Like, um, um, you know, I just just really love the cast here um, quite a bit. I, you know, I love that, you know, Yule went out to the... um, the exile Island and found the, um, the immunity idol like right away with barely any clues whatsoever. And then I think it was Penner who got looking for it <laughs> and oh. he just kept going back and digging and digging. He's like, I'm going to find it. And I'm going to find it. And then he like called you out at one point and be like, Oh, you got it. Don't you? He's like, Oh yeah, I got it. Was it Penner <laughs> or Candace? Weren't they sending? I think no. It was, was Pen, I think. What season was it where they were always sending Candace off to go to exile <laughs> Island? That, that was Cook Island. That was, was it? It was? Yeah, because Candace, <sighs> Candace only played twice in terms of playing a decent amount. She got voted uh, She got voted out super early in Blood yeah. vs. Water, and then Heroes yes. Villains, they didn't have Exile Island. Right. But, yeah, so there was this, yeah. Uh, like, the, that arc with fucking Candace, she comes back, and immediately, and I think it was Becky, <laughs> every time, <laughs> like, who are you sending to Exile Island? Oh, and, just, and then you got the, the mutiny. The oh, mutiny were yeah. us. Candace yeah. and, and Penner stepped off their mats to go join the other yeah. tribe. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is a great season, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, great Michael, cast. Michael, do you want to ch- chime in here? Yeah. So, I mean, I, the same thing. I'm going with Cook Islands and because for a couple of reasons, this was also at the time viewed as a disastrous attempt by CBS. This was the season where it was divided into four ethnic tribes. So until 41, it was the most diverse cast that the seat that they have ever had four white people and then 12 people of color on the season for us. So, I mean, it, it people like really winced at it at the time because this was season 13 and, Oh my God, how dare you bring race into this conversation? Um, but it, yeah. And, and it, it has one of those, you know, iconic love stories of all time between Billy and Candace. Oh my oh. God, Billy and Candace. <laughs> Shit. I love oh. you, Billy. <laughs> That is such a cringeworthy. It was. Oh my god! It was. It was horribly cringe, cringeworthy because moment he was of like, it. He, the way he talked <laughs> about it was just like she's a possession of his. It was just yes. awful. It um, was amazing. But it also gives us, you know, it, it's got my man Penner in it. Um, it Parvati is, it is here for us. Ozzy is here. Um, Cowboy, I think, who, even though he goes out relatively early, is such a is, is, is a like just a great. Um, <clears throat> 
character for us as well. Cowboy but, is the person who figures out, like he is the first person to figure out how you can do, split the vote. Yes, like literally, yes. that comes yeah, from Cowboy. Yeah, that was called, uh, that was, that was called uh, uh, Voodoo. Uh, he's yeah. what he called it. He, he had a dream one night and he called it Operation Voodoo, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like he invented a huge strategic element of that game. <laughs> So Don't and forget. I think that there's so much going on in Cook Islands that we that winner that heroes versus villains iconic, you know the let's write a note and give an idol to Russell oh. moment. <laughs> I think you know that that ranks right up there with you know Eric giving away his immunity necklace moments of mm-hmm. like really what are you thinking kind of things. So well, here's what I gotta say about heroes versus villains. I've always said this to people who love the season so much i love the season too and i'm picking it over cook islands but uh, the pre-merge in heroes versus villains was extremely good after the merge as soon as jt gets idled out by parvati's two idols it's a it's it's just it russell just runs the show from there and all the heroes just get picked off picked off picked off it's not as fun as the pre-merge that's a great point that's a really good point um it it kind of peaks too soon Uh, it's premature ejaculation yeah Uh, (laughs) so it it sounds like i'm in the minority here and that heroes versus villains will be out but i just want to bring back what we said before how we'll talk about jerry again this is the defining season where jerry finally has her redemption Yes, True. And I Absolutely. love that for her. I genuinely do. I always thought Jerry was great TV, and I love her mm-hmm. her mega arc for this show. Um, and she's great in Heroes versus Villains. She's good in All Stars too. But um, I am going to vote for Cook Islands. Um, Michael, you you kind of touched upon this. I had stopped watching Survivor at this point, and then I heard about this casting stunt for this season. I was like survivor race wars are you kidding me <laughs> and so like bob and you and i watched it live yeah, we watched because together it. like because this is this. one this is one that i actually watched when i was while it was on because you're like bob this is gonna be great it's going to be such a tragic thing on television they've broken them up into race and it's like it's going to be an epic fail and we watched it and it was actually pretty good it, yeah great. And I personally think the casting department worked their butts off to get really good people for every one of those tribes. And I, I yep. think this is true, but someone tell me I'm wrong. I believe that like the second stringers for Cook Islands then were most of the cast that made up the following season, which was um, Fiji. Fiji. Thank you. Yeah, um, and it was because you have a very diverse cast. Very there diverse as well. cast there too. It's, they're just boring as fuck on and they're less likable yeah that's the thing it's like it was like the mirror universe version of the cook islands cast and so um when i look at this cook islands cast like it to me um there are some people who you're like they are not standout players eric uh sandra is technically not a standout player but she gave us the all amazing fire making challenge which was (laughs) incredible um i think there are a lot of great moments we haven't even talked about jp who was i know that we should not be talking about this is like something but like jp was slamming jp was the (laughs) hottest thing i'd ever seen on television and then um who was the other brad i was brad talk about romances my god there were so many hot guys on that season and again i know i shouldn't be using this as a voting reason look at the end of the day from the from the opposite perspective here i mean there's so many hot women on this season like poverty and candid i mean oh straight man come back to us (laughs) (laughs) sandra's a beautiful real here let's be real here um so flirtatious poverty is better than strategical poverty. Let's say oh that. Oh my God, yes. I think they're both amazing, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I did not respect All poverty. Are great. <laughs> exactly. I am an equal opportunity poverty lover, although I did not love her in Cook Islands the first time. And it took me, um, Heroes vs. Villains, to really fall in love with her. But that said, I'm voting against Heroes vs. Villains and I'm putting Cook Islands <laughs> okay. first. So that means we have a final four of Cambodia Second Chances versus Pearl Islands, Kagayan versus Cook Islands. Is this the final four that I was expecting when we started out here? I don't know, but I think it's a good one. Uh, Going to go around the horn. Cambodia Second Chances versus Pearl Islands. Uh, Bob, who are you picking? I'm going to go with Pearl Islands. Michael Schwartz. Pearl Islands. Corey. I'm going to go with Cambodia Second Chances. Corey, you're going to hate me. I'm going with Pearl Islands. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, um, no, no, it's okay. Original casts hold a ton of weight in my mind mm-hmm. as well. So I understand you guys. And if it was another original cast, I mean, Pearl Islands is one of the great original casts. But, oh, that's that's one of the toughest ones, Yeah, honestly. it is. 
it is tough. And I I think Cambodia Cambodia still is to me one of the harder seasons in terms of like the gameplay, both strategic and the the conditions they were living in. And those people were troopers. Oh yeah. But I, I am I'm giving my to Pearl Islands. It's it's to me a more um effervescent cast if i can use that terminology like i couldn't wait to see what any of them did next and i wasn't sure what was going to happen you were on the edge of your seat the whole time the whole time i just needed to know what lil was going to (laughs) do uh next it's kagayan versus cook islands i'm going to start with you Corey. oh i gotta go with my uh with my favorite season kagayan Uh, it's uh, within the new school era it has everything you could want new school gameplay with old school style editing and an original cast it's just it's the per it's it's my favorite original cast season of all time all right michael schwartz <sighs> this one's hard as well because it kind of goes back and forth like but i think i think i'm gonna go with Corey on this one too kagayan is a great season and i think that i think that the Final two should really be an old school versus new school season. Mm, interesting. Okay. But do you think it is the stronger cast than Cook Yeah, Islands? I think that Cook Island is, I mean, Cook Islands, again, it has so much going for it. Um, but I think, and, and yes, I'm going to vote against my man Penner. Um, but the, the people that are on Cook Island, I think are just, yeah, I definitely think Cook Island is the stronger cast. Okay. Bob. I'm going to respectfully disagree with that <laughs> wrong opinion. <laughs> I'm going to That's pick cute. Cook. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm going to pick Cook Islands here. I, I, I am for between these two themselves. I said it in the previous round here, like the second half, the first half of that Kai Guy on cast. Like I'm looking at, I'm looking at it, the list on my end, folks, as we're going through this. I'm like, I, I can't visualize or I, I, don't, I don't know who these people are. Yes, you do. So oh. uh, I, there's some I know, people on Cook Islands that I can say I can't remember who you are, yeah. <clears throat> but Cook Islands for all the things we've already just shared in just this previous round just before we got here, like I'm looking through the cast and it's like, wow, all these people are memorable to me. I know exactly who they are. I can I can I can remember moments between them. Um all of those things, like, you know, all the way back to Billy at the very beginning. He went second, but we still talk about him because he hit Candace was in love with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's so that's your pick is, is cook yeah cook islands yep i'm torn here because my gut tells me to go with kagayan but bob makes an excellent point in that i can pretty much name from memory almost every cast member of cook islands and i haven't watched it since i watched it airing live which is how many years ago now like 15 yeah right it was season 13 but literally i can name almost every single cast member from cook islands and can visualize them kagayan i watched within the last three years and there are big gaps in the cast that I, I can remember some very early boots. I can remember everybody at final six and above. And then there's some middle tier boots that I can't remember for whatever reason, Jeffra, I remember despite being, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to figure out who Jeffra is. is oh, I, I think, remember Jeffra. Oh, I think yeah. Jeffra is trying to remember who Jeffra is. I suspect <laughs> Corey has a reason for remembering who Jeffra is. I believe she's from I the beauty Jeffra. tribe. Correct? <laughs> <laughs> That's Corey's memoir. I remember Morgan I remember too. Jeffra. These are the diverse perspectives we need on this we program. Need- um so i'm so torn here but if i vote for cook that means we are at a tie and that means i have to break the tie because it's a a minisode and i really don't want to do that so i'm going to go with my gut which is kagayan i i love (gasps) cook islands i know and that's going to make your final decision really easy bob that so you got that very true very true um, I am going to go with Kagayan ultimately, not just because it's the expeditious thing to do, but also because I think the stars are brighter in Kagayan. That final six is incredible. And there are even some very memorable early boots. So that gives us a final two of Pearl Islands versus Kagayan. We have our new school, old school dichotomy that Michael Schwartz was looking for. And I'm going to open it up for debates. I'm going to start with Corey, Pearl Island or Kagayan. Uh, I, I gotta go uh, in, in my bracket that I made. Kagiyan is the winner. Um, and it wasn't up against Pearl Islands, but uh, but Pearl Islands got lost along the way earlier on in my bracket. So I'm I'm sticking with Kagiyan here because it it's just like I said before, guys. It's my favorite original cast of people it has everything that you could want in in a Survivor season, except and this is the great part. 
except for a love story. It doesn't have any romances or anything like that. Uh, and you don't even think about that during the season. It has everything you could want except for a sappy romance. Except for your romance with Jatia. <laughs> I think, I think Tony's romance with himself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tony's love story with himself. Um, no, but that that's a, that's actually such an interesting point that I had not considered. There is no romantic arc, which is in pretty much every other season, isn't it? There's yeah, always always, something. Al- almost always, there's at least one romance. Oh, you know what? Kagiyan did have the um, Trish and LJ thing where she, uh, they, everybody was saying that she's like an older lady going after the young men. I don't, I don't even that. remember LJ. Yeah, because yeah, he was from uh, like he was Kage from Boston. <laughs> she was from Boston, so she's like this woman that's like 15 years older than him, just you know, gushing over how he's a Boston gentleman and this and that. And everyone else can't stand the fact that she loves him yeah. so much. But as someone who lived in Boston for 3.5 years, let me just say I knew a lot of Trishes, and um, <laughs> that that um, made it very challenging for me to watch her. However, I also really connected with her on a very cellular level. Um, okay, so that's, that's Corey's pick, and I'm going to go to Michael Schwartz. Where do you come down here? Oh, so this comes down to, like, this really isn't old school versus new school and like how these these people played these games because you know you're still talking um pearl islands you know which is season seven we're still what one two uh four seasons out before they start to introduce idols into this Mm -hmm. so all there's there's no all you're doing is truly playing on your social game and 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 your competitive nature and everything like that i think that when it comes down to it that the people that you have on Pearl Island, you know, um, really played their hearts out. And you have some really amazing, like, interactions. Um, Burton and Lil, you know, getting voted out for the outcast and having that first. And I think this was the first battle back that they ever did, too. It was. Um, was on Pearl Islands, too. So you have the outcast and Burton and Lil coming back um, into the game. You have Rupert's first time. You have Andrew Savage. And then you have Queen sandra diaz twine here now kagayan has its has its pluses too and i really argue because it's like i'm a big sarah fan and it deserved to get all the way to the final two but when you're comparing casts and like and everything i'm going pearl islands bob um pearl islands um you've got nudity (laughs) you have nudity (laughs) you've got nudity you've got rupert you've got Queen stays queen. You have Sandra. And the reason that Sandra is an amazing player is not only because she will drop the F-bomb all of the time (laughs) and get in your face, but she wore that orange pantsuit through that entire (laughs) season because they were forced to jump off the boat and go to shore with (laughs) nothing on that season. And that was amazing. And they got to that town. They were stealing people's shoes (laughs) from the other players. (laughs) Like... The, the amount of things that happened early on in the season that really hooked you to bring you in that the mm-hmm. cast were doing on their own, not just from editing or not just right. from, you know, anything like from anything that was created by the producers. Like these people were doing it like they're like, I'm going to take their shoes. This is a great idea. Um, and then just Sandra wearing that pantsuit that started very bright and vibrant orange and ended up very dull by the end. But I just... Um, I just love that season so much. I love that cast. Um, it brought us some of the greats and Queen stays queen. I'm uh, torn on this one because I, I hear all of the arguments. And when I look Nudity. at Kaga, <laughs> when I look at Kagayan, we have not talked enough about how amazing both Cass and Spencer are. Um, yep. Yes, that's true. You yeah. can love or you can hate Tony. Actually, you can love and hate Cass too, but I think Cass is an amazing villain. Like <laughs> Cass she is. Chaos cast? Chaos cast. <laughs> she blows shit up in like the most spectacular way. And she knows exactly what she's doing. None of it is accidental. Like as much as we talked about how much we love Lisa Welchel in Philippines, Lisa kind of accidentally creates chaos, but Cass is doing it very deliberately. And I love those types of players. That's just like, <laughs> oh, hey, look at all this game that's in front of me. I don't like how that's heading. Flip. Like that's, <laughs> that is good survivor skills, right? Um, and then to me, Spencer is amazing. Spencer, like, and he battles down from the very, very bottom. And he makes it so close. And it's painful to watch him get cut just short. And then the same thing to him in second chances. Ugh, bring back Spencer for Legend Seasons, please. Um, so those two to me really stand out. And I love Tasha as well. Um, but then I go to, to Cook Islands. 
excuse me, Pearl Islands. Pearl. And we, it's funny. You, we've mm-hmm. mentioned Rupert. We've mentioned Sandra. We have not mentioned the amazing moment where Sandra throws the fish and makes everybody <laughs> think that it was somebody else. I'm oh, like, yes. It was a uh, ally, uh, uh, Krista. <laughs> The right seat through under the bus it was so good and like we've not discussed that at all that is brilliant <laughs> um yep. you you we've talked about savage we've talked about burton with i have not said this while we're recording so i must say this now burton is the hottest man to ever play this game burton in that season is fire he is so michael yerger michael yerger like the two of them i would watch that video but like God. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also like he's a compelling character right because he's kind of like um the good looking american southern dude and you think he's gonna be great and he was out early because he's such an obvious target like that's a great arc and then he battles back in um but we haven't even talked about johnny fairplay who again hmm. like one of the great all-time villains of this show absolutely and like Johnny and Rupert are kind of the reason we had the survivor renaissance when we did like Mm -hmm. everyone was like this guy literally lied about his dead grandmother on television to make it another week um he's super compelling to me and what happened afterwards with him is really a bummer like mess and I'm not even going to touch that but as a character on this season incredible and I really do think in my opinion overall Bob touched upon this what gives the edge to Cook Islands for me is that these Pearl. Pearl why do I keep doing that? Pearl Islands, um, <laughs> is that these people walked in and they were loaded for bear. They were good to play, and it wasn't just strategy. It was like character. It was comedy. It was pathos. It was um, just creating crazy shit like Sandra. Like this was really entertaining television. It wasn't just a game. It was entertaining television. I don't think you can say the same thing for Kagayan, which is a game first and foremost. And I feel like Pearl Islands is a cast of characters, right? For good or for actually, no, just for good. So it's really true. Corey, does that that currently means we're three to one. Are you terribly upset if Pearl Islands takes this? I am heartbroken only for Kagayan, but I'm happy for Pearl Islands because I love that season, too. So, uh, I mean... Damn, I'm I'm sitting here looking at my bracket, thinking, man, I might actually get my my one season that I had to win to to win this whole thing. But I get it, Kagiyan, my favorite original cast, but Pearl Islands, you can't go wrong with that one either. I and think, I don't think there's a single season that doesn't deserve to be in this bracket. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's a really good bracket. Uh, I'm very. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think maybe if you had stumped for Kagayam while speaking in goat, that might have swayed me. <laughs> um, but in for llama. that reason, in llama, gotta, thank you. Not in goat. In llama to you. <laughs> exactly, llama. Thank you. Gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, people listening at home, shake your head in shame at me. But there you have it, folks. The tribe has spoken, and our pick for the best Survivor cast of all time is Pearl Islands. Do you agree with our choice? Do you, th- you want to use our hidden immunity idol and block our vote? Let us know your pick by leaving a comment on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or yell at us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. While you're there, make sure that you like and subscribe for more Great Pop Culture Debate content. Thank you to my panelists. I am always up for an alliance with you, and thank you for listening. Until next time, remember, Remember, everyone is entitled to their wrong opinion.